final reminder, this will be the last week that the vlogs are going up on this channel, the regular BDGE fantasy channel. If you enjoy the vlogs, they're still going to be coming out every single Sunday, but they will be posted on the BDGE NFL trivia channel. That will be linked down below. So this is the last vlog going up on this channel, but they still will be published. The show must go on. They'll just be on the uh, trivia channel. So link down below, subscribe there if you want to continue watching this. Something that's become a staple of these weekly vlogs is, is JMO coming in here and laying down the pipe on some player comp, take a position and say like, Tony is this player when it comes to trivia because he's inconsistent or he's a specialist, etc., etc." So I thought while he was gone, enjoying his vacation on the beach somewhere, probably drinking a Virgin Marg, I'd step into his place. And I want to do player comps today for all the guys in the office right now based on how they fit into the business, their skill set, what these players bring when they step up on the field and what these guys bring when they step into the headquarters, when they turn that mic on, when they hit the record button. So we'll start with Tony and we'll work our way down. Tony's player comp, simple. Derrick Henry. Kid's just a workhorse. No matter what you put into his belly, he will consume it. He will eat it and he will spit it back out to you. 20 carries a game, 30 carries a game, seven edits a week, 12 edits a week. It doesn't matter, it's getting done. In the dog days of the season, when things get hard, when things get repetitive or boring or cold, you can count on him to continue grinding away. The Derrick Henry stiff arm, I don't see a lot of difference between it and the Don's chop. When you see the arm loading up, there's just nothing you can really do besides sit back and witness greatness. Tony's also been thoroughly underestimated in the creativity department for his entire career. You give this kid a screen pass, there's a good chance it's a crib call. He just needs a little runway. He just needs a little direction and he could take it the whole way himself after that. So Tony's our Derek Henry. Now Matt, Matt is Debo Samuel. I mean 2021 Debo Samuel, just electric. You just get the ball in his hands and you let him get freaky with it. You don't actually know what's gonna happen when you get the ball to him, but more often than not, it's gonna be I don't micromanage. I don't tell him what memes to make. Just like Kyle Shanahan, don't tell Debo what routes to run. You don't tell him what moves to make while he's on the field. Now, sometimes he could do a little bit too much dancing behind the line of scrimmage and leave his team with a negative play. Sometimes you could take the SD card out of the camera before you turn the camera off and corrupt a bunch of hour long video files and we just took two steps back for one step forward. But that's just what happens when you're an eager player and you know what you bring to the field and you just want the world to see that. When Matt's on his A game, there are few players more tantalizing on the microphone. And that's why he's 2021 Debo Samuel. J-Mo, simple, Joe Burrow, Joey Shiesty. He was doing the damn thing before he was doing the damn thing for us. He built up the resume. He was the projected number one pick on the board. Didn't take a genius to figure that out. It was the easy choice. We weren't getting cute here. And he's just getting better and better year after year, improving as a player, improving video after video. And to my surprise, given both of their humble demeanors, neither of them can live without rocking these glare inducing heavy gold chains. But we know what his upside is. And now it's just the front office's job to make sure we put the pieces around him, to make sure we develop him so that we can real life that upside. Now last, but certainly not least, and I mean this with the utmost respect, gut, and we're actually going back to the Niners receiving core, Brandon Ayuk. Now Ayuk is on the very, very short list of my favorite players to really break out this year. He's got a clear specialty. Ayuk has quickly excelled to become a top 10 route runner in the entire league. Gut is a fantasy video editor dynamo. We know when we need that done, who we're going to. Now, like Ayuk in the early days with Shanahan, would sometimes find himself in the doghouse. Would make some boneheaded rookie mistakes. Misspellings on thumbnails, showing up late to work on the first day, just trivia performances that just lack consistency. But that's what happens when, you know, you're a young player and you're coming out of college, you know, like in Arizona State. You're on the football team. I know where your mind is. You need to get your head screwed on straight a little bit. But when the pieces finally align, we're going to have a special player on our hands. And me? Urban Meyer, UF Urban Meyer, leading a pack of stray dogs, probably some criminals in there. We're gonna face adversity, we're gonna face backlash. We might end up with a bloody face, but when January rolls around, rest assured, I will have our team in the Rose Bowl. All right, well, all the interns are gone. Tony's gone, Sexy's gone, we got Canada, we got California, we got the Jersey Shore, we got Florida. I don't know where Gut is. He's somewhere. But it's just me, so you're getting a lot of me in this vlog today. 
And something pretty cool happened, and I want to talk about it uh, in a little bit more depth. Yesterday, we hit 100,000 subscribers on the, the main BDGE fantasy-only YouTube channel. And, you know, if you follow me for a while, I, I could care less about, like, vanity metrics like that, subscriber counts, view counts, um, like, the money that we make off of all this stuff. It obviously unlocks a lot of things, and it, it helps us, like, progress towards where we want to go. But all of those things really are just that. They help us unlock like freedom and unlock the ability to chase after what we're going for. I've always operated purely based off like passion, instinct, and the way things are feeling. And if they don't feel right, we pivot, we experiment, we try to make them feel right. It's one ultimate goose chase, right? But you have to love the process. And I want to say I made my first YouTube video in like 2014. And I probably started blogging maybe two years before that. So Realistically, I've probably been making content for a decade. Like I've, I've been putting myself out there making content for a decade, way before this whole like creator economy was really a thing, or at least the level of a thing it is at this point. So when I say like we hit 100,000 subscribers, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean the same thing to most people out there that it does to me. This is probably the only real vanity metric I've ever been like, man, this is, this is kind of fucking cool because it's been something that is uh, a representation or an expression kind of, of like all of the consistency and the work that we put in. Because we have, what, 600,000 followers on TikTok. Uh, the, the trivia channel's blowing up thanks to the conversion of people from TikTok. And like that channel will be at 100K in probably like a year's time, whatever, two years time, doesn't matter. A fraction of the time it took us to get to where we are on the fantasy channel. And over the years, it has literally just been a grind, a consistent grind day in and day out, if not hour in and hour out to make this fucking ship of a Titanic move. And you see so many social people and brands and stuff hit that number in particular, 100,000 over and over again. Like it is not a very large scale number to hit on social, right? And this feels different to me because it's not something that came quickly. One of the, one of the things you'll learn relatively, well, maybe over a long period of time, I guess, is that the quicker you build something, the quicker it can fall. The longer you take to build something, the longer it will take to come to a halt, right? So we've been through some shit the last year and a half, two years, whatever. Been dragged through the mud, been done, lived in the gutter, but we are way through that. And we are in, I, I feel as good as I've ever felt work-wise. We are as good in a position that I've ever felt work-wise as a brand. And it's because we built a foundation prior to going through all the nonsense that plays itself out in, in the social world. I'm not even talking about anything in particular. We've been through, you know, enough shit where we just get a lot of mud thrown at us for better or worse for whatever it is. But the 100,000 means a lot to me in particular with this because I know I've built it the right way. I know I've built it by putting in, we have, I think like 23, 2400 videos on that YouTube channel. That is me showing up for myself basically every single day researching the video, making the video, making the thumbnail. And of course, like I have not done that all myself. And I guess I want to take a second to thank like everybody that's helped me out from the very, very, very beginning and everybody who's ever been a part of the content, whether it's Steve or Snacks and Animal and Ike and One Chains and everybody that's part of the E-Town Get Down, Scott and Mike and Noah and Noah and Noah and all the guys that are in here right now, the interns, and of course, Tony, who has pretty much edited every YouTube video that's gone onto the channel for, I don't know, since we were at what, like 45,000 subs or something like that. There's just a lot of people that have played a lot of part in getting to where it was. So when we get to a monument like this, I just so appreciate all of the work that goes into it. And when we hit a number like that on like another platform, something that comes quickly to me just doesn't feel, doesn't feel good because one, you didn't earn it. You didn't like work for it. And I just know how quickly that shit can get ripped away from you. So it doesn't, it doesn't have the same effect that something like this does. And it's just a reflection of all the shit that we've done up to this point. The ups and downs, the hours, the fucking blood, sweat, and tears, which all three have come out of my body in the making of this shit. And we've built something just, we built something strong enough that can, you know, encapsulate everything that's going on in here. Like that 100,000 seems extremely minuscule because so many people hit those numbers on so many different platforms. But I know that we did it the right way because this has all come from it. We have an office, we have a ton of employees, we sell our own products and services. There are so many people that 
have those numbers that have five times the numbers that have 10 times those numbers and and have not been able to pull off the same thing that we have which is what makes me really proud of getting to this number but knowing that we did it the right way i'm so fucking excited for the future of what we can do and i know what we're capable of only because i've been through there's fucking little skeeters everywhere right now i need to get the electric tennis racket i know what we're capable of doing because i've been through all the bad and all the good you know someone asked me the other day uh what's like the biggest regret you have in, in building your business and i hated that like my response was felt very cliche but i i've never really looked at what we're I, I think like in today's world a lot of people think about like a business and it's very black and white because a lot of businesses, you know, take startup money or they just like it, it becomes a business one day. Right. It wasn't there yesterday, but now it is like I filed to become a corporation or an LLC or I put up a storefront. We've never been that. It's just been a very long prolonged series of just showing up day in and day out, building a brand behind what we're doing, being a creator, then bringing on other creators. There wasn't any one decision that I made that I regret. There wasn't any like, okay, on this day, we're going to do this, right? And like everything is going to hinge on whether or not that works. I've never put myself in that position where it makes it difficult to answer that question. I don't have regrets because I've never put myself in a position where if something went wrong, everything went down the drain. So because of that, Anything that has gone wrong along the way has been fixable. Some of it's been fucking terrible. Some of it's been the worst periods of my life because of the decisions I've made up top, obviously, but it has made me so much stronger and we didn't lose everything because of those decisions. So I don't regret like a single, I mean, I'm sure I, if I fucking sat down and thought about it, you know, maybe like the Miles Sanders take in 2019, maybe regret that one a little bit. Um, or is that 2020? Both probably probably 21 and 22 also i'm down a serious note like business wise i just i feel so strong and in a weird way experienced although i'm very young and obviously have not very young relative to very experienced business people and have not experienced a lot of things that i probably still will go through in the next 10 15 years but i feel i feel so sharpened like i feel like i've earned my stripes over the last couple of years to the point where whatever we face going forward we'll be able to combat it and move forward in a stronger position and we, and we just have a lot of momentum right now we have a lot of fun things on the horizon and it's it, it's fun to come into work every day it's been a pleasure to come into work every day and work around people that are really inspiring to me that want to put the work in that challenge each other that challenge each other creatively and that we're all buying into the same vision so i guess i just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been a part of what bdg is at this point and it's just clearly it's far far larger than just the fantasy youtube channel which it was for a long time and i still believe will make us sustainable over the long run but it's it's taken on a life of its own obviously there are many other people involved there are other platforms involved and other communication tools involved and all that kind of shit. But anyone who's been rocking with us since 10 years ago, all the way up until, you know, a new fucking subscriber or follower or whatever on uh, on TikTok, it's all love, man. And I just I, I want people to understand just like what it really takes to build something like this. And it's the reason I'm so passionate about documenting it, because everything gets thrown around in social about you know, how quickly you can grow. And here's a fucking tip and a hack and a tactic and a growth fucking hack. And it's just like, it's nauseating. It's insufferable watching it from the eyes of someone who had to suffer so fucking much to get to where I am. And never in my wildest fucking dreams. Ah, that's not true. I think when I started, I had like an unwavering belief that I'd get to where we are today. I don't know how we get there. I didn't know how long it would take, but I always believed. But man, like the journey that content has, has brought me on from the first time I really hit the record button 10 years ago to like where I am now is it's indescribable realistically. And it's that first jump that gets you going and understanding that you're in this game for the long term, you're in it forever, or you're just not really going to be in it. And again, these, th this is kind of a culmination of that. So I don't know. Again, I, I just wanted to thank you guys, anyone who's been supporting us, anyone who continues to support us, anyone who's ever from bought a product of ours down to like the video of ours down to fucking through hate our way because it's made us stronger and it's put us in a better place all the way through. Um, so just wanted to show you all a little bit of appreciation and, and love.